What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It has been a hot minute since I posted a video, so I'm pretty happy to showcase some of this stuff. Um, my roommates are gone, which means I can actually record in peace, and there's no one blaring, like, bad banjo music or Panic at the Disco in the background, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we're ready to do this thing. I want to showcase some Mitre Stem CTF, or Steam CTF, as one of the challenges makes fun of it as. I don't know if they're making fun of it. I don't know what it is. Steam, Stem, I don't... I'm in a bathrobe right now, I just woke up, I hope that's cool. <laughs> I don't really even know. Is that like something you're allowed to do on YouTube? Is that something that... <laughs> so, uh, on CTF time, you can link to it, this is the page, uh, description and stuff for it, MiterStemCTF.org. If you aren't on CTF time, constantly lurking and monitoring for upcoming competitions and challenges, you absolutely should be. Register, log in, create an account if you haven't already. Um, there's about five and a half hours left in the game. Um, I want to take this time to start to record some of the challenges so that I can actually upload them and have them visible for your faces because people tell me, at least whenever I meet them or talk to them, like, man, uh, as simple and as, as little as some of these are, they are super duper helpful when I'm actually facing another competition. So here we go. Let's showcase, just, let's start with the Linux section. I want to be able to run through these. Um, a lot of people got this pretty quick, I think. I guess I don't know the, the traffic flow of the challenge solutions, right? But the description is peculiar. Um, it doesn't really have anything to kind of do with the challenge, just a little story thing. Collide is trapped in the dimensional transport module, etc., etc. The only note they really hint to is, as a precaution, they will place Collide in a clean room to remove any radiation. Um, clean room is the challenge title, and we're given an SSH command to connect to it. So, uh, just out of the goodness of our hearts, let's go ahead and create a directory for us to work in. Let's call it YouTube Miter, because I already have a Miter folder set up for it. Let's make a directory for the Linux category, because we like to be clean. Let's make a directory for 50 clean room, and the challenge points and the challenge name. So, I'm going to have a just little connect script that I'm not actually going to end up using all that much because, or at least once I kind of showcase what the what the challenge is to you, but I just want it for uh, the sake of stuff. Um, if it's the first time you're connecting to the service and the box, you are going to be prompted, do you want to accept this like RSA token? You just have to type in the word yes and then hit enter. Um, but it doesn't have a password, so you can just log in. So you can ls, but it will tell you, whoa, <laughs> ls, command not found. You can't do anything. That's super annoying. It's super stupid. Uh, you can check out, who am I? Nope. Dur. Nope. ID. Nope. Nothing. Uh, do I have Echo? Do I have, like, built-ins? Oh, I guess I have... Okay, that's cool. Uh, notice that we are in our bash, so restricted bash. If you haven't heard of that, it is a... a peculiar thing, right? Uh, maybe if you're in a blue team game or you're trying to act as a defender or you actively have uh, people trying to log into machines in some sort of game or exercise, Arbash is a cool option for you because it does kind of limit what people can do. Um, not allowed to change directories, kind of can't set or unset variables or especially environment variables, um, cannot use command names that contain slashes, so you can't use like an absolute pass for, th for things you want to run. Like I wouldn't be able to just say bin bash, it won't let me. Same thing for redirecting. I can't create to a file if I wanted to use any, like, waka wakas or less than Grayland symbols. Um, peculiar things, though, is that this does not denote the actual less than symbol. A lot of these said the Grayland symbol and pipes, but solely the left-facing less than symbol, like, we can do that. That's a peculiar thing. So what I did to work with this is I actually used echo um, path to see the environment variable that I have to work with um, for, like, locations in my path. And all I have was something that's in my current directory, supposedly, but I don't know if it is there or not. So I tried to tab autocomplete, which that at least let me do that. I can type out forward slash home forward slash ctf forward slash bin, and then I can see what is potentially inside that. And T is an option that we have. We can run T. So T by default will just kind of take in a file or input. Um, maybe I'm misunderstanding or maybe I'm not explaining this well, but T, if you give it something, it will display it on standard output and redirect it to a file or bring it to a file. So an interesting thing with T is that 
Um, actually, let's pull this up in, in GTFO bins so I show you what I'm talking about. If you haven't heard of GTFO bins, this is a cool utility because it is uh, like LOL bins, if you haven't heard of that, which is live off the land binaries for uh, Windows. So GTFO bins is the Linux side, but uh, this will give you commands or programs that will already be pre-installed or available on a fresh vanilla flat window system um, and the same thing goes for GTFO bins. This is a curated list of Unix binaries that can be kind of taken advantage of to do interesting things. Um, so we can just search can T or the T command do anything peculiar? Well it looks like we can use it to file write, suid, sudo, etc, etc. So I did some interesting things with this forward slash t tack a argument because that will let us write to a file. Um, and we didn't have sudo or any ability availability to do that in this, so that's peculiar. But um, that helped me when I looked at this, and it might help you if you haven't heard of this resource before. That helped me realize, oh, the tack a argument will be super duper helpful in trying to find uh, something else we can do with this. So... What I actually found was I can use T and then the less than redirection. I tested a lot of redirection operators. I tested to see what can I do with this command. Or how can I work with it? I just kept banging my head against the wall for the longest time. And I recommend you do the same thing. But I found that if I redirected a file name into it, it will actually give me the output of that file. So now I'm kind of scratching my head like what other things can I read or can I look at or can I do? Um, there's nothing. There's no file that I can read on the file system that would help me kind of determine how I can run commands, is there? I don't know. It's such a release issue. Uh, okay. Peculiar things, right? Um, but then I think I got kind of clever, and maybe I'm going down the rabbit hole here. Maybe I'm misremembering this, but I did t bin bash, and I got the entire bash command, which is a clever thing. Okay. That's the binary, though, right? So I thought, as a technique that I could do, was actually using t reading in bin bash, just as we've done, but now using that same command with tack A to like write to the directory path that we have. So if I were to put this in home CTF, um, it was bin, and then can I overwrite the T binary? I don't know. Now I tried to just run T and see if it would give me bash, but it didn't. Um, Nothing had worked, um, so I, I wasn't able to use that technique. I, I tried to create a new binary in there, let's just say like new, um, and it would supposedly put stuff out on the screen, but I can't run new as a command anymore, so maybe that just wasn't doing what I thought it was doing, and that didn't work. I wanted to explain that to you, though, so you know that kind of thought process or what I was experimenting with, and if you didn't know those resources, you do now. So... Uh, the technique that I kind of molded around with and actually had a, a peculiar point or two with void update, so shout out to you on the Discord server and the community. Uh, we like to play these just for fun. We like to hang out um, just, just to learn, really. So he had noted that, well, we're just using SSH to connect to the service, right? So why can't we do something with the SSH connection? You know how you can pass a command or an argument to SSH for it to run? before it actually executes everything in, in like bash RC, I think, or it, it just, it starts the shell. So he figured, can I run, who am I? Or like ID, or actually get command output that we wouldn't be able to run otherwise when we were inside of our bash. So we kind of spat back and forth about this and I'm like, oh my God, dude, why not just run straight up bash? And we did it. It gave us a shell. We were able to just straight up run commands. Sorry, who am I? Cool. And we had command output. So now I thought, well, okay, let's just straight up find the flag, right? Because we have a command. How are we going to just get uh, flag.txt, right? How are we going to be able to track down where the flag lives? And I just ran find uh, using the root directory, and then I just use a name flag.txt, which was kind of a shot in the dark, but we needed to find out. We needed to learn. So uh, root flag.txt. There it is. Okay, cool. So you can cat that out. And there's the flag. We could save that. We could do that. Um, however, that made me learn now that when we were connected, we could just simply use T the way we were using before. I just didn't know the path of the file. Like, we didn't know the path of the flag. If we did, we could just T root 
flag.txt, and there's that. Like, because we, can, because we can read any file, now that we know where the flag is, just go ahead and spit it to T, and we've got that. So, peculiar things, a little bit of learning. Um, interesting that we didn't have any commands other, like, other than T. Uh, I thought it was kind of neat using that autocomplete feature to just determine what files do I actually have in my path, like in that bin directory for a CTF user. So, peculiar stuff. Um, let's actually save this flag. And let's write a simple get flag script with this, which is going to be a duplicate of the connect script, which is giving that cat uh, command to it. Because as an argument, we don't have to use that t method inside of our bash. I talked for a long time. I said a lot of words about that. <laughs> I hope I hope it didn't get lost in in translation, you know. So let's just cat root flag.txt now that we would know where the flag actually is in the file system. It looks like that is pretty consistent for the rest of the Linux challenges in this, this category in MITRE CTF. So that's that. We can go ahead and mark that challenge as complete. And a lot of people asking about this syntax, it's curly braces and then a comma and then underscore complete, which um, will like take the previous file name and then just tack on like it's replacing an what the original thing would have been, and then adding on complete. So now we have that file name renamed, which is very cool. It's a very interesting technique. Um, I learned that from Monorail, who hung out on the Discord server for a bit. So if you are not on the Discord server, I please absolutely recommend coming to hang out. Um, it's the team that we kind of played this competition with. Um, we're all really here to learn. We're not here to win. We just kind of wanted to have fun. So if you check out JH Discord, that's us hanging out and having a good time. Just just trying to learn, just trying to get better. Not not into win it, you know what I mean? So Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I will see you in the next video where we tackle more Miter CTF.